Ransomware attacks continue to be one of the most significant cyber risks organizations face. Successful attacks often lead to wide-scale disruption, large data breaches, substantial payouts, and huge costs to the enterprise. What is ransomware? Ransomware is a type of malware that will encrypt your invaluable data. The data can only be decrypted with a key. And that's what your threat actor will press you to by demanding a ransom. If you're hesitant to pay, the actor will probably try and convince you through extortion. Such extortion includes disclosing your data to the world. So how much is the ransom? There are several studies out there, but the ransom alone may vary depending on your revenue. But on average, we are talking about 4 millions. Even though studies say that over half of you pay, paying ransom doesn't mean that you get the key. It does not mean that you're immune to new attacks either. In any case, you're facing a lot of work to get back to normal operations. So how does ransomware get your invaluable data, encrypt it and eventually steal it? Let's go through it step by step. First, it's useful to realize that the attack vector, the way in, is unfolding in three steps. Reconnaissance, toehold and escalation. There's a model of your data and the application that's serving it. It's placed within your organizational trust border, yet accessible from the outside. Quite a normal scenario. Normally, reconnaissance is done by bots and one of the key missions of scanning and probing your services for design weaknesses and vulnerabilities that can be used as a toehold. Another bot reconnaissance activity you see a lot of is email campaigns with all sorts of harmful content aimed at luring your employees to open an attachment that looks legit, clicking on a link or other means of having them give away personal information. Let's pause for a second to talk about your application's trust boundary. Inside this boundary, you expect data to be trustworthy. To become trustworthy, data must undergo proper input validation. Assume your login procedure involves capturing the user's credentials and do a database lookup to verify they are correct. The procedure therefore crosses your trust boundary with the captured data to do the lookup. Now imagine that the developer did not properly implement a cleansing method for the data submitted. So an attacker is able to send a carefully constructed username that SQL query gladly executes since we are trusting the data and allows for unauthenticated access. This way, the attacker can get access without being present in the user team. This is a generous toehold. In the infamous movie vulnerability, this is exactly what happened. The next step is to escalate the permission so the attacker can get to all the data. And at the end of the day, your crown jewels. Whether your crown jewels are accessible directly from this point on, or it requires some lateral movement to get file system access doesn't really matter. The attacker should have ample time to exfiltrate your data and upload and execute a ransomware. The other main method involves people, your employees, customers, partners, contractors, and any other with local access to your network. Reconnaissance campaigns involve phishing to get credentials, an email either carrying ransomware, hidden in an attachment that appeared to be legit, or links that could lead to an installer or an infected website. The goal here is to have one of you to install the ransomware on that device, the toehold. Compromised credentials come in handy for lateral movements about in your network and for escalating the permissions on the compromised user. Rest assured, attackers relentlessly produce new ways to try to trick users into clicking on bad links and opening up infected attachments. The ultimate step is to have file system access to the application where your crown jewels reside. Data is encrypted and exfiltrated. So what are the best practices for preventing ransomware in the first place? Secure your design of your applications. Adopt zero-thrust architecture principles. Continuous vulnerability monitoring. Patching and vulnerability remediation in a timely order. Continuous user awareness to spot dodgy emails and phishing attempts. Use strong, unique passwords and enable multi-factor authentication. Limit user privileges to reduce the impact of compromised accounts. Segment your network to be able to easily contain potential infections and limit lateral movements. 